you're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. How's it going today? Everybody doing okay? Going to be an interesting stream, you, if you ask me. If anybody saw the thumbnail, you will know that we are in for an absolutely wild ride. We're going to be talking about Greg Locke, of all people, and this deliverance conference that he's holding right now. It's like it's an exorcism conference. He's teaching people how to exorcise demons, and he had a bunch of guest pastors in. It's weird, dude. It is weird. One of the pastors brought a sword. Seriously, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So let's just, I'll tell you what, why don't we just jump right into it? Um, let me switch screens so that you guys can see what I'm up to right now. And mute the music. We're going to be playing Smash Bros, because why not, right? While we uh, listen to Greg Locke get into shenaniganery. Okay, without further ado, why don't we listen to Greg Locke introduce this guy. I think his name is Harry Schaefer or something. We have like, I, I think, a minute worth of Greg Locke talking about, I, just doing an intro to his talk. Uh, so let's listen. People literally are just calling from all over the world, just saying, look, I, I'm struggling with something and I, I saw a YouTube video. Uh, I, I saw something that that the Lord spoke to me about, and, and I think you're the guy. And and I, you know, I do just want to point something out. Like we haven't even gotten to Harry Schaefer, Greg Locke's guest speaker yet, but Greg Locke is famous for this saying that he does. Okay, let me find this clip from him because. Hey, I'm just going to go through some of the videos that I have from Locke for just a second to Many find the right one. In the, in just let me drag it over here and just skip through them real quick because I'm looking for one specific video here. I'm telling you, we got two banners. You better get on the right side. I'm standing there. Uh, it's now what's floating around on the internet. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, I'm not bowing down. This can, I'm gonna take conservative sin. This is the video. Okay. This video is from, I believe, January 2021. It's a pretty old video, but he goes on Stu Peters' show. Greg Locke does, right? Listen to what he says to Stu Peters here. This conservative censorship is true across the board. I've been banned from you know, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. has banned me, put me in jail many, many times. I'm sure you... That, did you catch that? He's been banned from YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook and stuff. So... How is it that what he just said is even a problem? People are contacting him from YouTube saying, I saw your YouTube video. Uh, I, I saw something that, that the Lord spoke to me about. And, and I think. How are people seeing his YouTube videos? He's got a YouTube channel again with 100,000 subbies, despite the fact that he was banned from YouTube. This deeply bothers me. Some of the stuff that this guy says on his YouTube channel is depraved. Straight up depraved. It's wrong, some of the stuff he says. He has deep-seated issues with the LGBT community, for one thing. Um, that's just, like, one of the many groups that he has made it very clear that he hates. Uh, and he has a YouTube channel. YouTube is, like, helping this guy spread his message, and it's deeply wrong, and, and it bothers me a lot. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's keep listening. By the way, this video we're watching here is on YouTube. Just go to his channel. And it, if you hear something that he says that is a violation of YouTube's terms of service, report the video that you hear that thing in. You're the guy. And, and I had been hearing his name a little bit from Tim. And I would met him in a couple of places, I think maybe in some political rallies and done some radio interviews. But let me tell you what happened. I was on the... Amen, dog. I was on... Amen, dog. What? I was on the book tour for our third book, which was my very public goodbye to cessationism. It was called Accessing Your Anointing. And so I was on a book tour. 
And every night of that book, we didn't plan it. Nobody knew that my wife and I were praying about deliverance. At that point, I thought people are going to think I'm hokey. They're going to think I'm crazy. Yeah, I mean, a little. I've already lost enough friends. I don't need to lose any more. And so nobody had any idea. But every night, and you'll hear a little bit more about it tonight, every night of that book tour, something massively deliverance-related happened in the churches. Right? Like when I was with Pastor Shannon and I had nothing, I didn't understand Derek Prince Ministries and they started talking about, you know, spirits of Leviathan and I thought, who are these people? <laughs> well, on that book tour last year, I went to Pastor Henry Schaefer's church and I was preaching. Yeah, this is the guy. He's introducing the guy. One night. And it was just a, a regular service. We had a great crowd. I think I preached on throwing Joan out of the boat, whatever. And I got done, I was at the book table and I was shaking hands and you know, signing books and doing pictures and, and things. And we had never really met a lot personally, right? Never behind the scenes. And it was such a God moment. And he didn't know then in that moment, I've shared that with him since. He walked up to me and he grabbed my elbow and he said, I wanna to talk to you in my office for a minute. Well, normally when you're the visiting preacher and you've preached and the preacher wants to meet you in the office, It either didn't go well or he needs a cut of the love offering. I don't know. <laughs> he said, I, I need to see you in my office. And so we went in. He had no idea, none. This was a Holy Spirit moment. I said, right, a Holy Spirit moment. Okay. Down in his little chair, and he sat behind his desk. And he said, I want to talk to you about deliverance ministry. And I'm thinking, excuse me? I mean, you have to understand, deliverance for me at that moment was a Burt Reynolds movie. That was it. And I'd been watching, you know, Daniel and Isaiah and Vlad. I've been watching them guys, and I'm like, wow, that, well, this is something different. This is so strange to me. But I like it. I was so dr If you're unfamiliar, by the way, deliverance ministry, I, I've said this before, but it's just exorcisms. They're learning to do exorcisms, basically, to exorcise demons from people and stuff. It's obviously completely fabricated because demons aren't real in the first place. So, whatever. On to it. And so he had no idea. So we said, I'm to talk to you about deliverance ministry. And for the next nearly hour, every, every bit of 45, 50 minutes, he began to tell me how God opened him up to the ministry of deliverance. And how the people began to just come hungry. Dude, is this, cr is this guy crying? He's crying. Why is he crying now? He said, God told me to move the front row of my church because he was going to fill it with wheelchairs of people that were going to be delivered and healed and they were going to get up and they were going to walk. Dude, this is disgusting. This, this is one of the most disgusting things that I think, like, pastors do is promise to get, like, people who are disabled and in wheelchairs, promise to get them out of those wheelchairs. It offers false hope that they cannot deliver. Uh, and it, it's just wrong. It's just straight up wrong. And I'm going to be honest, I heard that. I was like, <laughs> I'd love to believe that, but I wasn't there yet. I'm just being honest. I believe, help my unbelief. I mean, I was so Baptist born and Baptist bred. When I was dying, I was going to be Baptist dead. That was it, right? And I ain't against Baptists. I preached for a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, he's not Baptist anymore. Um... I, from my understanding, he kind of identifies as non-denominational or whatever, which basically means evangelical. Ironically enough, a bunch of them have me showing up doing deliverance ministry, but nonetheless, I'm sitting there thinking through all of my denominational mindset, and this guy's talking about people getting up out of wheelchairs because they've been healed from a spirit of infirmity, and he went on to tell me these things, and I'm like, this is fantastical. And then he prayed with me, and I left, and my wife had picked It's ridiculous, actually up a book on the, like deliverance from darkness or something that had been written by one of his friends and we got on the bus and I said honey you ain't gonna believe this you know that stuff we've been talking about like secretly behind closed doors in a vault that we didn't want anybody to know about this guy brought it up and he was real with it and there's a reason each one of the speakers are here and as I introduce them throughout the day and the night you'll know that today and tomorrow But you ought to give reverence where it's due. He's crying again. Come on, Greg. It's just, it drives me nuts when he cries about the most ridiculous stuff, honestly. 
And a year ago, I would have never hosted a conference like this, nor would have I ever been involved in a deliverance service. A year ago. I mean, our church was baptized in deliverance ministry like overnight. And our church was like, we've been waiting on you, preacher, to catch up. God got the church here before he got me here. I'm telling he really did. Am I telling the truth? He did. But of all the major influences in my life, for deliverance. He's still crying. This is insane, dude. Pastor Henry Schaefer has been one of the greatest. <laughs> Doesn't have a mega church, but has a mega heart. And people come to him from all over the world. He's had to start mass deliverance services because so many people are showing up. And I love him and I appreciate him. And because the time is his, Global Vision, get on your feet. I want you to welcome my dear friend, Pastor Henry Schaefer, to the platform for our national... Finally. Wow, dude. He just gave him, like, the longest introduction. It was ridiculous. ...deliverance training conference. God bless you, Brother Schaefer. We love you. Go give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house. Okay, so this is the guy. Um, he's had a couple of big hits. Uh, you know, he's made a couple of clips so far in my clip collection. Let me just show you one of the stranger ones from this guy. Let me see if I can find it. Hang on. It's, uh, where is it? If you go no, that's not the one. Um... Is this? No, that's not it. No. Hold on. No. Here, this is the one I was thinking of. Many times in the, in the deliverance of a spirit spouse, you would call them up. So let me, let me, can I give you, can I give you a for instance on this? Oh, please do. I'm taking a female through deliverance of a spirit spouse while she is there it's manifesting in her body it's messing with her as we're talking to her and i call this well he's talking about a demon a demon is possessing her and it's like a demon that married her secretly or whatever against her will i don't spirit spouse up i said give me your name i want your name tell me your name and it takes a piece of paper and writes on a piece of paper s-p-i-c-e what does that say Spice. I took my computer and I turned around and I said, the definition for spice, salt, pepper. You know what the next definition down is? Plural for spouse. No. No to all of that. That is nonsense. The plural to the word spouse is spouses. Spouses, not spice. Next question, how many spirit spouses are there? And she went, 10 of us. So needless to say, the dude is full of it. <laughs> ridiculous, man. Absolutely ridiculous. So let's, uh, let's listen to this guy's whole sermon here. Thank you, Jesus. Your pastor, give him a hand clap. Wasn't he awesome? Woo, pastor Greg Locke. Wow, you can be seated just for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there's so much I want to share with you. And I want to thank you for allowing me to come and be here and for you to sit and listen to what I got to say, I believe, from the Lord. But as I stand here before you... Dude, he's crying too. Oh, my God. Why are these people crying about Jesus all the time? I can only be who I am. I'm not Pastor Locke. I'm not a worship team. Dude, he sounds like he's like on the edge of sobbing. What is he even crying over? I'm not sure. Why is he crying? I can only be who I am. And that's all I am is who I am. Okay, that's all anybody is is who they are. I don't why is he crying? I don't understand. 
I am a demon terrorist, though. Somebody shout amen. A demon terrorist. Wow. I am a demon terrorist. And a regular terrorist, too, if, uh, you know, his political views are, are to be believed. I mean, the guy is obviously teaching at like, or pre he's obvious, he's preaching at a Greg Locke church. So he's obviously very far right. I mean, some of the stuff he's said in this deliverance conference is simply unhinged, straight up unhinged. It's, it is bizarre stuff, dude. Bizarre. Somebody say I'm a demon terrorist. Well, and I'm trembling like a, like a, <laughs> I'll tell you what happened to me getting up here before y'all were in, in the worship. I got dizzy. I'm talking about, uh, bro, that's the anointing coming. I ain't, woo, woo. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't take none of this out of my preaching down here now. <laughs> but I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and where's, where's uh, uh, Dana and our team at? Yeah, you go ahead and bring that stuff out if you would. These are my assistants here. They got all this stuff all taken care of. I figure that if we are under a circus tent, we might as well bring the balloons out. Did I you know, I, I never underestimate the value of a good show. Uh, it, it serves a pastor or a, a public speaker of any sort well to be entertaining and bring entertaining stuff to the table, you know? that somewhere if we're under the circus tent I'm bringing them out hallelujah and you know I don't mean no disrespect no disrespect there at all on that so you can just put that down here if you would just hey just put it down on the ground down there if you would and get that box and bring it around here and get my get my sword oh yeah there's a sword yeah there you go Bring all this down here Let's just get ready for a moment. Let's set the atmosphere. Can we do that? Let me pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for what you're going to do here in Jesus' name. May you touch every heart, every person that is here, Father, bring deliverance into their life. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. And this is how we do it at University Parkway. Scripture says you cannot spoil a strong man's house until you first do what? Y'all going to help me do this? Say, in the name of Jesus, Amen. look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I bind the strong man and every person here. You hear me, strong man? You're bound. You go here. Uh, who, is strong man a demon? I may, I may have missed something. Is he talking to a specific demon? Is the demon in the room with us right now? What's his name? Henry? Or Henry, right? Is the demon in the room with us right now, Henry? Hear the word of God today. Sit on down. Be quiet. Any spirit that came in this property, in this tent, we bind you up, send you out to the four corners of the property in Jesus' name. What? To the four corners of the property? Why not to like outside of the property? Why not back to hell? That's a weird place to send the thing, right? To the neighbors? Is that where he just sent it? I'd be kind of upset if I were the neighbors. I'm just letting you know, you want to be successful? What did Jesus say? Second thing, let's do this, number three. Say, Jezebel, Jezebel. you not wanted in this place. Not, not in this church. This. Out you go in the name of Jesus. God reigns in this place. Jesus is Lord. If you agree with me, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house then. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask one of your ushers. I don't know what you call them, an usher, but I'm going to tell you what. I need somebody to manage me a rock, a stone. I want a stone. This just happened to me. Get me a stone from out there. You know, I know y'all got a bunch of them around here. Something about this big around. I need something about this big around, about this big, almost kind of flat looking. Look, don't discount the value of an entertaining show. Uh, you can never underestimate the value of an entertaining show. Bring it and place it right there, if you would. And then y'all take up offerings in buckets, right? Y'all have an offering bucket anywhere? 
Y'all get me an offering bucket. There you go. Man, look at all these. Man, you got a good staff here, brother. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Just set it down right there. That's perfect. Set it right there. Oh, set it down right here. I'll have more. I'll have this whole place fill up with stones, bro. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right. Very good. Y'all can just sit right over here if y'all would. Just leave that stuff and we'll sit it right there. Where's Jesse James at? Is he here? Jesse Jones. Yeah, just set that down right there. Is it Jesse Jones? Yeah. Jesse, I want you to sit right there on the front row right there for me a moment. We're going to use Jesse James here in just a moment. Okay. Who the holy frick is Jesse Jones? Who's he talking about? I mean Jesse Jones. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's how I remembered him. Jesse James. I couldn't remember. Is this a cheap joke that he's giving us right now? Jones, but I got the James part right. Amen. All right. So let's get it here. Take your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 18. Stand with me at the reading of God's word. Just honor him. Just here for a moment. We're going to talk about it in Matthew chapter 18. We're talking about, we're going to pick it up. Oh, let's see, we're going to pick it. This is going to be about the unforgiveness in a person's life. And, the, and Peter asking the Lord, how often should I forgive? Somebody say, you already know the, you're church people. How much? <laughs> 70 times 7. Yeah, I don't believe this whole forgiveness thing. You don't have to forgive anybody for anything if you don't want. It's your fucking life. Live your life the way you want to live it and don't feel pressured to forgive somebody for doing something really messed up to you if you don't want to, you know? That's what we're going to forgive, right? Wow, I actually made it to a live. You're the, you were the one that really planted the seed that led me to leave the cultish Pentecostal religion my mom forced on me. You do humanity's work for Lazy God. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Glad you made it. Look at what he says here uh, in, in the parable, he says, but the same servant that went out and found, in verse 28, found out one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me all that you owe me. And the fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw that he, that was done, they were. He's still sniffling because he was crying earlier. Very sorry and came and told their Lord all that was done. You know the scriptures. Then the Lord, then to his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt. Because thou desirest me, shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors. Till he so, wait, is he still talking about forgiving people for things when they don't deserve it? Interesting, okay. He should pay all that was due to him. Verse 35 key scripture in your Bible every time that you see these words in your scriptures in your Bible so likewise should be circled words like therefore but so likewise Jesus is hinging a spiritual principle dude I'm getting hecked over here for us shall my heavenly father do also unto you if from your hearts you forgive not everyone his brother, their trespasses. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. When we start off with deliverance, one of the first things we always begin with is a spirit of unforgiveness, having unforgiveness in a person's heart. When we talk about that, we're talking about how important it is for you to forgive. For unforgiveness is the doorway that allows demonic spirits to come into your life. That's where you begin at is with this unforgiveness. That's just in my, in my uh, uh, assessment of... Well, why is your assessment worth anything more than anybody else's? Like, this guy is so full of it in every way, every aspect of his life, because demons aren't real. All of this stuff is completely made up, and he continues to say it as though it's true. Why is his assessment worth anything? Well, you know, the Bible tells us 
if we hold any unforgiveness in our heart, what happens? God does not hear our prayers. Dude, I'm getting messed up right now. So that's why you got to deal with unforgiveness first to get that in there. But what I want to do is I want to share with you something about this here. What's the difference between unforgiveness and a spirit of unforgiveness? Here's the difference. Unforgiveness is what someone has done to you, how they have hurt you. It could be your husband, your wife, son, daughter, a place where you work at. Someone has hurt you, mom or dad has hurt you, and you have brought some kind of a, a thing against you and brought in unforgiveness. We, many of us being Christians, we all know we gotta, we got to deal with unforgiveness. And every time Pastor Lot preaches on that, everybody deals with that same unforgiveness. Now let me give you a little like um, insight into the way they view the world. They believe, I mean, I'm talking Greg Locke and Henry Schaefer and all of the pastors here today. They think that a demon is to blame for literally every ill that you deal with. Uh, mental illness, bipolar disorder, uh, schizophrenia, um, depression, can't sleep, anything, uh, literally anything. It is all due, drug addiction, it is all due to demons. There's a demon possessing you right now, and that is what's causing literally every problem in your life. And if you just... Uh, this is coming from the party of personal responsibility, remember. If you just exercise those demons, you'd be fine. And here's the reason why. There's a difference between unforgiveness and a spirit of unforgiveness. And let me tell you what that is. Is that a spirit of unforgiveness has the mission to carry the unforgiveness and the lie that it's got to talk to you about so you pick unforgiveness back up again. So when you deal with the unforgiveness, the sin of unforgiveness that Jesus says here, that doesn't necessarily get rid of the spirit of unforgiveness that came in. And that's why it's important for you to be delivered of a spirit of unforgiveness. That way there, you're not tormented all the time. Well, I just, well, I just prayed about Susie Lou last week. And why am I... What a name, Susie Lou. Love it. Televangelist talking about forgiving debt. Surely they don't believe this nonsense. Oh, yes, they do. Yeah, they definitely do. <laughs> am I the only one finding it hypocritical that Greg Locke's talking about unconditional love and forgiveness? No, you're not the only one. He is absolutely deeply hypocritical and doesn't even realize it, I don't think. Like, the guy has no idea that his beliefs are internally inconsistent. The things that he believes do not, like, link up with each other at all. But that doesn't seem to, like, connect with him at all. It's just bizarre, dude. Bizarre. Surely God has left him to his lunacy. Uh, I assume you're talking about um, the dude with the sword or who's about to have the sword. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Also, thank you, Nascent Complacence, for the super chat. Uh, this week still having problems with what they did to me. It's because you dealt with the, the breach at the altar and placed it under the blood, but the demon didn't go nowhere. Deliverance sets you free from that tormenting voice that rides you all the time. And when you get free of that, that is the beginning of your deliverance at that point. So you can have unforgiveness. You can have unforgiveness at uh, first grade, second grade, third grade, high school, junior high, where you work at. Every one of those incidences that comes into your life that is monumental is a different spirit of unforgiveness that it carries. The one towards that rapes you. Oh, please don't get into this. I'd love to keep monetization. The one that sold you the bad car. That's a different one. And that's why we deal with it in such a way that's very personal and gets down to the root. So we're getting to the root of the issue. And I, as, as I was listening la yesterday, Pastor Lot, you did a great job in doing the comparative. You taught me. See, I, knew how to, I didn't know how to say it like you said. He just, 
He's just so eloquent, isn't he? Okay, he's so great. Everybody's so great. Oh my God, we love each other so much. He's just awesome. He's a hard, he's a, he's a tough act to follow, I can tell you that. <laughs> but as he taught us yesterday, the comparative point in Scripture, this, in this story here, he called him a wicked servant. How can you, did someone say he's not? Your mom's a wicked servant. Saved. No, that's not, he's, he's saved, and he's a servant of the Lord. But the thing is, is that compared to not forgiving versus a one forgiving, he's considered wicked. Does that not make sense what I just said? So that's why even in that passage of Scripture, that is taught like that. So let's talk about deliverance. Let's talk about getting set free. This is one of the things that I do. Is it all right if I come down, Pastor? This, this is okay, I think this is where the sword comes out. So he was talking about uh, people bringing his sword down earlier. This is where it comes out, I think. Just the way everyone I teach. I'm a very simple person, and I just teach in a very simple way. I am more, what you would say, visual in things. Come on up here. Y'all, ladies, y'all come help put this on him. <clears throat> on uh, Jesse James right there for me. No, he's James. He'll always be Jesse James to me. Yeah, I, I did some kind of inside joke. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so they've tied balloons to this young fella over here. And the balloons say something. I, I can't make it out. God, I hope he takes his sword and, like, swings at the balloons to pop them. It's some kind of a crazy illustration. How fantastic would that be? This guy gets into his act at Greg Locke's church and starts swinging the sword around at people. Oh, my God. Turn that on around. Slide that on around for him a little bit. Yeah, so I, by the way, I haven't seen this. I've, I've only seen bits and pieces of it. Oh, look at this here. So this is... This is most Christians in church right here. Let's not, hey, Jesse, raise your hands and worship the Lord. Say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Listen, you want to dance? Yeah, Listen, dance. come on, we're going to dance a little. We, hey, we come here, we shout. Come on. Y'all, hey, that's church right there. That's Christians right there. In bondage, man. And to all of these things, and what deliverance does, it actually sets you free. From many of these tormenting things it's not a matter and remember deliverance is like demon exorcisms basically he's not saved his spirit man saved but in his flesh dwells no good thing and look at this here you will never ever be able to fulfill your call nor your destiny in God until you get free let me let me just say this here let me tell you this here God is so jealous of you if I can just say he's so je he loves you. Dude, is he crying again over God being jealous of people? Why would God be jealous of people? Seriously, think about this. Think about what he's saying. God is jealous of you, of a, of a human being. Isn't God capable of, like, any feeling, any emotion, anything that he could possibly want he can have any time? Why would he be jealous of humans? Seriously. What is this guy thinking? Where did he come up with this nonsense? So much. He loves his church so much. And he is so tired of the devil beating up his people. Oh, God. This is so cringy, dude. Oh, my God. This is so cringy. I can't. And molesting his people. And taking advantage of his people. It's like a man that will come in. The devil's like a man that will come in at nighttime. Oh, no, please. Into your children's bedrooms. Okay, we're going to jump forward just a little, get, a little bit because I don't want to hear it. This guy's getting too emotional. You hear me? God's raising up ministries that's going to kick the door open. Somebody shout amen. And uh, his voice is cracking because he's so sad and heartbroken over the fact that 
What is he crying over again? I don't know. I don't know. He's crying over something. I don't understand. He's raising up ministries that's going to kick the door in and tell the devil, let my people go. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Woo wee. Thank you, Jesus. So here's what happens here. When a person comes and it comes for deliverance, they're battling all type of things. Look at this here. They're battling all kind of... What's this one here? You can let your arms... You know, Jesse James, you don't... Uh, you're not under arrest yet. <laughs> this is so cringy. Unfor hold that one up. You can hold that one up. Unforgiveness. We just dealt with that, didn't we? But there are so many of you here right now, you know what they did, what they said, and so it plays over in your mind over and over. God wants to set you free from that tormenting spirit called unforgiveness. The breach has been dealt with at the cross. You put it under the blood, but I can't get it out of my mind. Spirit of unforgiveness is there to torment you. And this is what mass deliverance does when they call these things out. Come out. Okay, hang on. Let's read the comment. This is bizarre. These guys sound like kindergartners making up a game and its rules on the fly. I aspire for those improv skills in life, right? It is really strained. Some of this stuff is just bizarre, dude. Just bizarre. Uh, hang on. Let me... I'm trying to zoom out because I can't see very well. That works. Um, City Real, dude. Welcome. Irrelevant, but the Old Testament very clearly says that sick people should stay away from the temple. Keeping that in mind, why are they so opposed to closing churches during the height of COVID? Not only does, you're right, absolutely, not only that, but it also says sick people are supposed to wear masks. It says cover the lower half of your face. But doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. These people are actually, uh, like they espouse ideas that are actually opposed to what the Bible says. Another example is they say that abortion is wrong. The Bible is actually in favor of, says you're mandated to get an abortion in some cases. Does that matter to them? Of course not. They're just going to make things up. Just keep on making it up. Extra biblical. That's the kind of thing you can expect from these people, you know. Yeah, thanks for the super chat. Hello, Owen Morgan. I understand last month you wished to gain entry to the YouTube Illuminati. We've tried everything to contact you, but Pastor Greg Locks blocked my messages. Please respond. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, sometime recently I talked about... I was reading Greg Locks' book, and he... I think he referred to the YouTube Illuminati in the book. And I was like, I'm seriously considering changing my YouTube name to YouTube Illuminati. <laughs> That's a great name. I appreciate the super chat. That's really funny. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. So let's go ahead and do this one here. We put this one down. A lot of people, look here. Let's do fear. God's people is tormented by fear. I don't know what I can say. What fear? What fear are God's, tor are God's people tormented by? I don't understand. Like, I know that... Christian these these Christian cults like Greg Locke's uh, cult for example tends to instill fears and phobias in people that's part of a cult that's what being in a cult does to people that's like part of the process is instilling fears and phobias in people but what does the Bible say that you should like live in fear of 24 7 outside of like maybe God like what is this guy even talking about Nothing that he's saying is biblical. It is all extra biblical. Coronavirus fear. Fearful. Well, unfortunately, people have kind of given up on caring about the virus. I haven't. I'm still taking it as seriously as I can. Um, reasonably seriously. You know, I wear my mask when I'm out, and I still take tests stay home if i'm sick and all the you know everything i still do all that stuff um but greg Locke's church they never took the virus seriously at any point ever 
At no point did the people he's talking to here, quote unquote, live in fear of the virus ever. Not once. Listen here. I got it. I had it. My oxygen went down to 83 percent. Holy shit, dude. That's really good. That's really bad. That's that's terrible, actually. 83 percent. Aren't you supposed to be hospitalized at like 85 or something? Maybe there's a doctor in the house who can give me some insight. I had a doctor came to the window of the house and looked in, knocked on the window, put the thing on my finger and said, you got to go to the emergency room now. I said, Jesus will heal me or he'll take me. Genius. Genius. And when he was lucky enough to not die from it, I mean, it, it was sheer luck, not, not Jesus saving him. When he was lucky enough to not die from it, he thanked Jesus and said, Jesus, you know, everything I believe must be right or Jesus wouldn't have saved me. It acted as a reaffirmation of every single thing that this dude believes. Every bizarre, unhinged thing. This is nuts. An overweight, an overweight white man is giving advice on how to free yourself from a painful existence due to choosing a path of self-harm influenced by demons. I believe that explains itself, right? This guy is... There's no self-awareness in this guy's head. None. Whatsoever. It's insane. This whole thing is insane, but so deeply entertaining, dude. But I'm not going to let them put that stuff in me. Somebody shout amen. Not going to let him put what stuff in you? What are you talking about? By that point, you wouldn't have gotten a chance to get anything put in you. Uh, they're very anti-medicine, too, by the way. Not anti-drug. That would be good, generally. You know, drug, drugs are bad. Legit. But anti-medicine. They are anti-medicine. They don't believe in taking medication for pretty much anything. And that most definitely includes the vaccines. So, yeah. They think that it's like Big Pharma trying to get one over on you. They're trying to take advantage of you. And they think that Pharma Kia is a demon that, like, tries to get people to take medicine so it can possess them. It's, it's nuts, dude. Nuts. And I'm standing here free in the name of Jesus. I still serve the risen. Listen to me. Listen here. That Bible that you hold in your hand is written to me. Actually, I think it's written to everybody, but that's neither here nor there. You've got to grasp that. That Bible's written to me. I mean, it's got, you've got to say it for you. Everything in there is for me. It's not, for, it's not another, another, another dispensation, not another time. It's for me. And coronavirus, you think this is some, what they got planned in. You think this is some, what they got planned? Oh, please. So the the virus was planned, apparently, according to these people. And they've got even worse stuff in the works. This is nuts, dude. What is going through these people's heads? But the, listen here. Let me, tell you, let me tell you what's going on with this deliverance and things like this here. The gifts of the Holy Spirit that we speak of in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. All the gifts... Gifts of healing, miracles, all of this delivers and all of this takes place. The gifts of the Holy Spirit is for one purpose. Now, we have a lot of things, but the main purpose, let's say the main purpose. The main purpose is this here, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, is to ensure that the church will survive till the end. Okay, the gift of the Holy Spirit is to ensure the church will survive till the end, okay? Till the end. All he would have to do is bring something across the planet that would wipe out mankind, but the church, the believing church, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the power of God in the deliverance ministries that he raises up that when you cast out evil spirits, healing comes forth, miracle comes forth. They are there to, ins listen, I'm trying to tell you, they are there to make sure the church survives. Now Take a look at this guy's shirt, by the by. Oh, God, I'm dying. Look at his shirt. It's an American flag that says faith on the back. This is a perfect illustration of this guy's world philosophy, his life philosophy. 
It's all about Jesus and Trump, basically. He's a he's a Trump extremist. It's all about Jesus and Trump, the two messiahs, effectively. That's how he views things. It's nuts. Hang on, let me switch my headphones one second here. Other stuff that goes along with it, I mean, visions, dreams, and all, uh, hey, that's, that's it. All he'd have to do is bring one thing, wipe the church out. But God's already got this thing prepared. God tells us not to fear. Fear is not of God. Look here, fear of dying. Fear of dying from the coronavirus. Well, it's weird that God tells them not to fear, right? And then he goes out and buys a bunch of guns to protect himself and, and encourages people to bring guns with them to his church and all this stuff. Uh, kind of an odd thing for somebody who doesn't live in fear to do, right? Fear. There was a spirit that came up and talked out of a woman and says, My name is Fear. Oh, yeah, and now he's telling some fake story about an exorcism that he didn't actually do. And I rule the world. You hear what I'm saying? Come out, fear. Come on out, fear. Come out in the name of Jesus. Fear comes up and comes out. Let's do this one here. Anger. Do this guy right here. We're talking about Christians right here. Anger. Here's what happens. You write up. Let, let me show you this here. Here's how hang, anger works. You ready? So I, I guess he's hitting him in the face with this thing. Okay. Makes him mad. Y'all see what I'm talking about? You all right? Let me get that thing out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> all right, let's give Jesse Jones a hand clap. Did he do good? That's what anger does. Anger, you were right up at Walmart. No, you were right up at McDonald's and don't get one, two, or three, but go with my wife, Sister Schaefer. Everything stops. It's going to go. I want a cheeseburger. No cheese. That messes them up. Y'all hear what I said? I heard it. I don't understand. What is he even talking about right now? And, and, and what happens is here is they get angry on the inside. You know, tell them what they do on the food. You better pray over that food. Oh, and by, and, and by the way, while we're talking about that, let me tell you how serious it is about your brain for your food. Can I tell them? Took a man through deliverance. He had intestinal problems right here. Messed up. Called the spirit up. Got ready to cast it out. I said, what's your mission on him? I said, how did you come in? I came in through the Chinese restaurant. Imagine that. <laughs> Okay, is this just like casual racism that we're hearing? I'm, I'm not not sure I even understand what he's getting at, but I think that he's just being casually racist. Came in through the Chinese restaurant when he was eating. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I said, what gave you a legal right to him? He said he did not pray over his food. Oh, okay. Wow, wow. So he's exercising a demon from some guy. And he asks the demon, how did you get into this guy's life or whatever? And he says, I came in through the Chinese restaurant because he didn't pray over his food. Wow. You can get possessed by a demon by just not praying over your food. Who knew? For he ate it. You don't know what's been done over that food spiritually. Paul says you can sanctify it and pray over it and cleanse it through prayer in faith in faith and that's the reason why while we're talking about all that anger that comes here let's, let's stay with anger just for a moment husbands and wives wife you are afraid to even talk to your husband and to bring certain things up you know who i'm talking to because you know how he is because when he that anger demon comes up and starts beating on him he's a different person it's not the person you married. It could be a pastor. It doesn't matter. It's, a, it's any. It's a. It's anger, and it comes up. It says bad things to you, makes you feel like you're this big, and then it goes down, and he apologizes. Maybe spirit of anger, and that spirit's there to torment you and, to, and destroy your destroy your marriage. So I'm. 
Dude, this is an oddly specific like situation that he's outlining for us right now. Is it just me? Talking about we come to church like this with all of this. I'm serious about this here. I am serious about what's going on. You see, when we talk about this doubt, hold that one up, doubt and unbelief. There's an unbelief one in here somewhere. Doubt is a spirit. You realize how much doubt and unbelief has stolen from you in your life? I'm talking about just giving in your time. Agreed. Doubt and uh, lack of confidence, I would say, steals an awful lot from people. No joke. If you just had the confidence that you'd be able to do something, have enough confidence that you'd be able to do something, that you try and you, you do it until you can't do it anymore, you get a lot further. The key to absolutely everything is to do it. Just do it, as Shia LaBeouf would say. Do it! God's in your offerings. I'm talking about just moving in ministry. A spirit of doubt will come up and talk to you. God said, I want you to do this. But you'll say, but pa listen here, this is going to be with pastors and all. What will happen, I will probably lose half my church. Let me tell you this here. Pastors and deliverance. When deliverance came to University Parkway, in one Sunday, <clears throat> this don't mean a whole lot to y'all because in one section you got more than a whole lot. I got the whole thing. But out of 150 people, 75 people got up and walked out when I said, we're going to continue on with deliverance. That'd be like half your church leaving. It's just comparative. You know, it's just percentage numbers. Half. Yeah, I, I have no idea what he's even getting at here. This is weird. So I asked my treasurer here, Dana. I said, Dana, how much just went out the door? And she says, $100,000. You can go down the list. In a year's time, these people put in $100,000. That don't mean a whole lot to y'all, but to a little small church, that means a whole lot of money. And uh, they asked me, they said, no, I think that's a whole lot of money to literally everybody except for Jeff Bezos. That is an obscene amount of money. What are you going to do, Pastor? We all leave. This was leadership that walked out. This was not, this was just not people, and these were leadership people walked out the door. And they said, what are you going to do now? Who's going to pay all these bills? And I said, I never thought about that. I've just been following Jesus. Yeah, that's the problem, though. He's not. He's not really following Jesus. What he's doing is twisting the Bible to his own ends. He is misinterpreting it and reading it differently, uh, reading verses that aren't even in there and mixing politics into it as much as he possibly can. That's usually why people leave, because they feel that what you're doing is unbiblical. People don't leave because they think that you're too biblical. That doesn't happen. But, you know, none of that really connects in this guy's head. Never thought about it. The very next Sunday, I had 75 brand new people, and the money never changed. Oh, I bet. Totally. 75 people left your church because you were saying things that were unbiblical, and then the very next week, Jesus made sure you had 75 brand new people. That is so believable. I, I totally believe that. God changed the wood out. He's changing the wood out now in churches. He's changing the wood out that won't burn. But I'll tell you this here. There is a, 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 a storm of deliverance. And when it comes to your church, Pastor... Are you going to let doubt and unbelief drive you? Or are you going to believe what God said? This is Deliverance is the spearhead of the end time revival. This is it. This is what they're prophesying about on all the prophets that's on the channels that has thousands and thousands and thousands of them saying it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. No, it's already here. You hear me? It's already here. They're, they, they, they're going to miss it just like they miss Jesus. So he's say, wow, just like they missed Jesus. What is he talking about? It seems to me what he's saying is that the end is here now, and if you don't believe that, then you know you're wrong. Uh, you're gonna miss it or whatever. Uh, dude lives 
in a delusional reality. No joke. When he came. But when that storm, when that storm comes, it's going to divide your church. Because let me tell you how. That's an interesting choice of words. When that storm comes, right? Weird. That's kind of a QAnon thing to say. Is it just me? Hang on. Let me get to the part where he starts using his sword, swinging that bad boy around. Let's see. Just going to skip forward a little here. Skip forward. Skip, skip. Because I know he pulls out a sword eventually. Come on. I want to see that bad boy. Here's the sword. Okay. Here we go. All right. Let's see what this dude does with the sword. He's about to pull it out. And this guy is in a squid costume. Okay. Check this out. Get rid of him. Is you take the, the Bible, here's what he says. You take the anointing oil, go ahead and anoint the front, the back, the sides, both sides. And at the very top, mind control, he has a tooth that bites in right here. And he bites, he's, he's a tooth of a bone. He bites right through your skull, spiritually. The tooth of a bone? and he bites through your skull spiritually and holds on and sucks the spiritual life out of you many times when you take micro then you take the bible okay here comes the sword which is a sword so the bible's supposed to be a sword all right This guy's name's Harry Schaefer, by the by. Compliment to Owen. I'm a witch. I believe all are sacred to source, what the religious refer to as God. As an atheist, I see is more connected to source than any believer. I love you, and thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I, I am all about ending extremism. That's what it's all about. I'm glad you're here, though. I know some people, some people don't even have enough faith to do this. He said this... Oh, dude, please tell me he's going to swing the sword at the guy. Please. You take the sword of the spirit and you say, you hear me, my control? I cut you, look here, all the way up to the hub. You cut them up far enough, they don't grow back. You cut them down here, that's what you've been doing. Cut them up to the hub. Uh, I feel like he's a little cavalier with the sword, but he hasn't really swung it at anybody yet, has he? All the way around you sever this spirit off like this here in the spirit realm then you reach up to the top of his head and you you do this here you hear me mind controlled I pull you out of his mind out of his will out of his emotions pornography you have no hold over him you understand me I cut you loose all doubt and unbelief and anger and fear and wrath and I pull you off the top of his head now Okay, so I guess the squid was supposed to represent a demon that's possessing him or whatever. In the name of Jesus. I didn't write the book. I just do the book. See what I'm talking about? So the, the whole demon possession thing isn't really in the Bible anyways. Like, there, you know, there's some demon possession. I'm sorry. I meant the, the deliverance ministry thing isn't in the Bible where uh, like all the ideas and beliefs these people have about how to exercise demons from people and how to pray them out and all this other garbage. It's not in there. This is all completely fabricated. So actually he did. Well, he maybe he didn't write the book, but the book is not the Bible. He's not talking about biblical principles here at all. Now, if you read the book, people will think you're smart. <laughs> they will. Just read the book. So watch this here. And God told me, he said, it's in the book. He's not going to give you all these things supernaturally. When he, he's already given it to generals. And I just gave you a key to setting your own self free and setting your children free. And everyone here needs to go through deliverance for what? Now, let me tell you why it's so important. Let me tell you why the armor of God does not work. You say it works. Well, then what is the armor of God? What? Why are you having so many problems with pornography then? Why are you having so many... Put this back on, brother. 
Well, everybody has problems of some sort. Now, I, I completely disagree with the whole premise that that thing is even a problem in the first place, generally speaking, unless you're in a, like a relationship that wouldn't want something like that. or That's totally unrelated. Uh, everybody has problems, is the point. Everybody. So I find it really odd that this guy is making it out as though if you have any problem at all in your life, then it's because you're possessed. I mean, fundamentally, that is what they believe, though. He thought he was over with it. Where's that, Where's that uh, bucket at? Are you ready? Oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. Because it's metal. Yeah. You know when they want to sh- say everybody thinks the armor of God? Are we talking about armor? Met- is it metal or something like that? When you put your cell phone inside this bucket, there's no signals can get to you. Uh, that is inaccurate. You need a Faraday cage for that. Your s- cell phone can still get signal, I believe, if it's in a bucket. Correct me if I'm wrong. Metal bucket. That's called a... That's called a... Uh, what is it called? Faraday cage. I'm an electrician. I ought to know that. Oh, that's right. He is a Faraday cage. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. He is an electrician. Uh, I don't think a bucket would do that. And also, that's not an electrician that would know about Faraday cages. That's a physicist, right? Wouldn't physicists know about Faraday cages? How many coulombs are in a Faraday? But nothing can get in. That's why the helmet of salvation is supposed to be so powerful to you. But you get up every morning and you put it on and you want to know why you keep battling pornography, doubts, and unbelief and all of this. You see. You know, I would say people are battling doubts because their beliefs are fundamentally ridiculous. Maybe that's why. You see. Why does it not work? Somebody say, Pastor, make it plain. It's plain. You understand what I'm talking about? You get this stuff out. You get this out, and the armor works. Get it out. Dude, I don't even understand what the whole point of that whole thing was. What was he even trying to get at? And where'd the sword go? I want to see more with the sword. Gird up your loins. Be a so- Gird up. Love it. Gird up your loins and fill your horn with oil. I am such a fan. I'm going to try to use that in my everyday life. Soldier. If you're battling this, stand up and say, I'm battling it. And I need help. What's this here? Oh. Brother Lot. Won't you do the honor here? Ty, won't you come do the honor here? I want everybody to do this here. Yeah. That's a pin. Yes, it is. I want everybody, everybody. Dude, I'm so distracted by what's happening on screen because it's getting bizarre uh, <laughs> that I'm just losing. Everybody say this here. You ready? Y'all got to do it together. Just grab some of these. Everybody say, you got to pop it when I say it. When we, come out. Pop it. Pop it. Come out. Come out. Come out. And hey, take that thing off that man's head now. Let's give him a hand clap. Didn't they do good? Come on, didn't they do good? <laughs> Woo! One last thing. One last thing. You, know, you can sit down, my friend. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. This is the last thing I'm going to say. The other day, I love preaching about the parables. No one's never really let me do it. But I l- what? It's your church. Can't you preach about the parables to your heart's delight? Why are you listening to what other people want? Of them. I was going to preach a message about the, the four soils. And I'm sure all of y'all know them. And I got ready to stand up with all my notes. The guy said, Mm-mm. talk about this one. He said, I want you to talk about the soil that has a stone in the soil. He said the, st- the soil that has a stone in it will not bear fruit. 
it won't bear fruit. That's okay, everybody. Let us stir the devil up. Listen here. Watch this here. Dude, what? What spirit is it? What spirit? The spirit of your mom. Mind control. That's... The, when they say the spirit of mind control and stuff, just give a little context here. What they're talking about is witchcraft. They believe it's the spirit of witchcraft. That's what they think the spirit of mind control is. Mind control. Mind control. See the kid just lying on the ground. I have to imagine that she believes that she fell out in the spirit. That she probably believes that she was just overloaded with God and, and the the Holy Spirit and just, you know, passed out from it or whatever. Bizarre. Hey, y'all know what that does in our church? We just sing a little louder. <laughs> drag them off to a room somewhere. Dude. Was there a protester? Is that is that what was happening? I think there was a protester, and they were all standing there watching him. We just sing a little louder. <laughs> drag them off to a room somewhere. Most churches had to shut them down for a month. Worse than COVID did. <laughs> so here's this here. He said, talk to people about the soil that represents their heart that has a stone in it. And I've never talked about this. And as I started ministering about God said, there's a place in your heart that does not bear fruit. And there's a stone covering it. Wow, this is absolutely bizarre, dude. This guy is just strange. He is straight up odd. Check out Bobby Connor, another crazy evangelical. It's easy to and should be trolled. Okay, I'll check that out. Sounds interesting. I appreciate it. Man, this guy is something else. He's really interesting. I'm going to be doing more of this guy in the morning if you guys want to come watch. Uh, either 11 a.m. or 4 p.m. tomorrow on my unfiltered channel. I'm going to be covering some of it. So give it a look if you guys want to, you know, see more. I think it's pretty crazy. Pretty interesting stuff. Anyway, all right, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to call it there. I appreciate you coming and hanging out. It's been fun. And I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow morning. Uh, if not, then possibly next week. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. If you like what I do and you want to make sure I can continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, you can support me on Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I sell all kinds of shirts and stickers and stuff on there. Second, you can support me by checking out my Etsy store. I sell 3D printed stands for every system from the original Nintendo to the Xbox One. And finally, if you want to support me in other ways, you can check me out on my other channels. I have the podcast channel, which is where I talk about whatever's on my mind. Politics, social issues, whatever. You can also find it everywhere podcasts can be found. Or you can check out the videos on my main channel where I focus on destructive cults. As it is with most channels these days, I rely on the support of viewers like you to keep my channel alive, so sharing my work is extremely helpful. Anyways, check me out in all those places if you haven't already. Thanks for listening, guys.